man Dave Bedini once again trades in his guitar for a hockey stick. Back in 2003, Dave's Gemini award-winning doc, The Hockey Nomad, took us from the Middle East to Transylvania to Mongolia in search of Canada's game. Well, this time out, Dave hops the Trans-Siberian Express and explores the frozen ponds of Russia's north. And he reveals a nation that's perhaps even more hockey crazed than Canada. We're heading out of Moscow by night. We're going to catch his overnight trains. Beautiful night, a little bit of snow, about minus eight degrees below zero. And uh, we're going to head into the country, into the heart of Russian hockey. We're going to go to Kazan in Tartarstan. Let's go. This sort of an alarming lack of uh, fat or old guys here with crummy equipment. So I'm sort of fearing the worst thing. The Hockey Nomad goes to Russia, coming up next on The Passionate Eye. Tonight on The Passionate Eye, hockey nomad Dave Bedini takes us on a journey into that other great hockey nation, Russia. Wow, so beautiful. Oh, too, too, too big. Not too small. Still too weirdly chairhead, eh? From Moscow to Siberia, he finds old stars from the 72 Canada Soviet series, brings us into the lives of the best young talent, and discovers some world-class super fans. Here's Hockey Nomad Goes to Russia. I was eight years old in 1972 when the hopes and dreams of a nation hung on a single goal mouth scramble at the south end of a dark rink in Moscow. The Canada-Russia series showed us a hockey nation as devout as ours. So 33 years later, I went where Team Canada had gone before me. I decided to discover Russian hockey for myself. I wanted to live the Russian game, to wander from the statues in front of Red Square to the smoky rinks of East Siberia in search of the soul of the game and the heart of its people. To be a hockey nomad, to be a hockey player, the ocean is my blue line, my shavings on my hair. To be a hockey nomad, to say this love is sick, Red Square, Gorky Park, and the Kremlin were all places I'd learned about in 1972, but Luzhniki Arena, Russia's most famous hockey rink, was where I wanted to go first. I found two of the country's most storied teams, Moscow Dynamo versus the Red Army, the KGB versus the soldiers, renewing their rivalry in the old rink. But in 2005, all that was left of the Moscow Hockey Wars were rows of empty seats and a scattering of old combatants, among them the great Alexander Yakushev, who led all Russians in goal scoring in 1972. I have <laughs> социальной жизни. Поэтому 
не только поломали какие-то структуры политического плана, но мы поломали, в общем-то, и структуры в спортивном движении. While Alexander Yakashev was sought after by the Montreal Canadiens but refused leave to the NHL, Alexander Ovechkin's future is the NHL. Whereas the big yak played for iron-fisted coaches and was considered an equal among teams of 20 men, Alexander Ovechkin is all about individual athletic expression and a dream of earning millions playing for the NHL's Washington Capitals. Конечно же, приятно то, что раньше такие традиции, такие игроки были крутов, Ларионов, Харламов, Мальцев и Бы хочется на них быть похожим, но всегда как бы хочется быть похожим на самого себя. The new generation of Muscovite can be found not only in the rinks, but also in the streets. Moscow is a city in transition and in many ways in conflict. Teenage summers here are no different than anywhere else, except the guitar playing and beer drinking is done not a hundred feet from the Kremlin wall. Following day, however, aging communists replace the kids, and instead of heavy metal, a soundtrack of old party songs fill the air. Both Alexander Yakashev and his wife, Tatyana, were the toast of the town in the 1970s. While he patrolled left wing for the Soviet national team, she led the starry life of an aspiring dancer in the Brezhnev era. Though long faded from their status in Moscow's social circles, they still carry themselves like sporting royalty, a king and queen from another era. Do you remember the first time you saw him play hockey? And did he impress you? В основном в этом человеке именно чисто, вот понимаете, это какой-то необыкновенный нос, стройность, рост, всё. Это был вот щелчок. Мне было интересно, а что дальше? А что? Как он говорит? Звук его голоса. Do you ever have to protect him from uh, from crazy women? Because we talked to uh, three or four hockey fans outside the rink yesterday, and we asked them who the most handsome hockey player was, and three of them said Alexander. Это подтверждение, что меня неплохой вкус. So you never have to be like a hockey player. You never have to use your elbows to keep the women away from Alexander. Я не подавал повода. Now, do you want to go shopping? С удовольствием. С удовольствием. Потому что всегда что-то есть новое. Посмотреть. I think that's a yes. I'm the lonely Canadian changing in the dressing room. Though one of the goals of my visit was to play with the veterans of the 1972 series, I found another team of veterans to play with, ex-soldiers who fought against Afghanistan in the 1980s. I'm a little worried about the caliber of play because in Russia they don't, they don't have a house league. So most of the people who play hockey at an older, at advanced age have committed part of their lives to learning and studying and actually really being good at the game. So, there's sort of an alarming lack of uh, fat or old guys here with crummy equipment. So I'm sort of fearing the worst thing. But we'll see.
Among all the skaters, Misha was the team's ringleader. <laughs> Misha went to war in Afghanistan after 20 of his friends had gone off and done the same thing. By the end of the war, however, only Misha returned. His freedom was short-lived when he and a friend were arrested for brutally assaulting four Moscow policemen and sentenced to five years in jail. But Misha survived prison and returned to become a hero among his friends. Yeah, we came to Russia expecting, you know, skate with the Central Red Army and uh, play with the giants of Russian hockey and stay wearing this uh, smelly dressing room, getting stoned with a bunch of Russian hosers. It's perfect. <laughs> to ecstasy and drive us to madness. Unravel the mystery of our emotions with passion and fury. The Emotional Brain. A four-part series continues with Love. Tuesday at 8 on CBC. When Canadians want to know the whole story, they turn to CBC News. Bringing you the Canadian perspectives. The source, Canadians trust. CBC News, The National, with Peter Mansbridge. Tonight at 10. Would you buy a car without an airbag? Or a safety belt? Would you... Put my little brother in a car without his car seat? Would you put me in a car without OnStar? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Hey, Dad. By the time I go to college... You'll wonder how you ever... Joe without it. Don't wait, Mom. It's the next big step in safety. Who's gonna go there first? Someone should. Only GM could. Get you guys. Hey, how about a couple of Papa Burgers? Yeah, we'll take two Papas for five bucks. Rory! There you go. Alright, thanks, Dad. Uh, I'm gonna go sit with my friends. Hi there, what can I get you today? <laughs> Anyone want this extra root beer? Right now, get two Papa Burgers for only five dollars at a and W. It was quiet for a while, and then it started again. Bam, 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 every morning and night. Sorry, guys. They got a new flavor. Try to keep it down. That's it? Imagine a dental plan with flavors that kick it up another notch. Crest Whitening Expressions, now in refreshing vanilla mint. A smooth vanilla flavor with a cool kick of mint. Mm. Bam! You see? Crest Whitening Expressions, new refreshing vanilla mint. Part of the Crest Dental Plan. Healthy looking, beautiful smiles for life.
When the West thinks of Siberia, we usually think of the worst. Endless gulags, the buckling cold, and wastelands of snow and ice. The last thing I expected of Omsk was a city painted in gold light with beautiful women promenading down city streets. Nor would I have guessed at its reputation as the intense new hotbed of Russian hockey. In Soviet times, promising young players were plucked from the provinces and sent to Moscow to play. But these days, players like the top 12-year-old in the country, Genya Kuznetsov, has a choice about where he plays. Having been recruited along with his mom and dad from the bleak, faraway industrial town of Chelabinsk, Genya dreams of one day earning top dollar with a pro team. Это я не хвастаюсь как мама, это статистика, факты. Go plus pass. Genya, who wears number 15, is given a chance to show everyone why Omsk has brought him in from such a distance to play for their team, the avant-garde. Все готовы? Да. Despite Genya's promise as a young player, there were other reasons why the Kuznetsovs came to Omsk. После похорон старшего сына Женя мне как-то сказал, что я буду большим, и если я буду там хорошо играть, у меня будут деньги, я обязательно проведу турнир в памяти погибшего брата. Is there ever a little bit of fear and uncertainty uh, lurking at the back of your mind when you think about the future and what it might hold? Душе есть немножко, конечно. Though the avant-garde finished in second place, Genya has a brilliant tournament and is named the MVP. A few weeks later, Genya faces his next challenge, a road game against his former team. Вот и мне Алла Даутова звонит частенько, и я прям ей говорю, я хочу к вам. Челябинская. Старший сын погиб, мне очень не хватает сходить вот даже на кладбище. В церковь здесь вот часто хожу, ставлю свечку. И... Oh. Uh -huh. 
As the train approaches Chelabinsk, Genya is anxious over the prospect of playing against the team he abandoned for the Omsk avant-garde. For the first time, Genya appears to wear the full weight of his promise as a young athlete. The ice should be the place where Genya is freed from the politics of his visit and the pressure of his peers and family. But as anyone who's ever played hockey knows, sometimes the game lets you down. Женя, конечно, очень волнуется. Игра у него не получается. Ему нужно, конечно, гол забить, тогда он почувствует себя уверенным. Все-таки на своем льду против своей команды очень тяжело ему. For the first time all year, the young star is kept off the score sheet. This is CBC Television, Canada's own. I'm Alan Park from Air Force. Tomorrow night on CBC News World, the story of a derelict department store in Vancouver's notorious downtown east side. Can it be turned into an urban showcase? Find out on Rough Cuts. The Passionate Eye returns in a moment. card is the travel rewards card that actually makes it easy for you and your family to fly. Yes, and we're offering double points on new Avion cards until October 31st, 2005. As far out of town as you'd like. 
RBC Royal Bank. First, for you. White chocolate and raspberry. Cookies and cream. Black forest cake. And lemon meringue pie. I love you. La creme of our yogurts from Danone. Four new dessert flavors, each with a touch of real cream. Hi there. What can I get you guys? Hey, how about a couple of Papa Burgers? Yeah, we'll take two Papas for five bucks. Rory! There you go. All right, thanks, Dad. Uh, I'm gonna go sit with my friends. Hi there, what can I get you today? <laughs> Anyone want this extra root beer? Right now, get two Papa Burgers for only $5 at A&W. White chocolate and raspberry. Cookies and cream. Black forest cake. And lemon meringue pie. I love you. La creme of our yogurts from Danone. Four new dessert flavors, each with a touch of real cream. Hey, do you know where the... <laughs> what? I want to take you somewhere. I'm free for dinner. In San Francisco? That would be nice. We could go back to that little seafood place. Our hotel's only a block away. But this time, we'll have a view of the bay. And I booked a trolley tour right before our sunset cruise. Planning a trip with Expedia.ca means getting your trip your way. Happy 12th anniversary. 13th. Yes. Expedia.ca. Flights, hotels, car rentals, packages. Now we're getting somewhere. It's through the snow and deep cold where you find the famous Russian spirit. This is especially true in Moscow, where life is ebullient despite the cloak of a heavy, unrelenting winter. The streets are packed and restaurants, shops and galleries burst with bodies. Summer in Russia was a sunny revelation, but it wasn't until I arrived through the fog and sleet that I felt like I was walking through the real Russia. While Alexander Yakushev is the face of Soviet hockey, the aging, aching veteran of 72, Yuri Blinov, is its soul. Yuri and his wife Tatyana have tried to embrace the new Russia, despite living a common life after years of privilege with the national team. Так что мне в этом плане очень хорошо было. У меня голова не болела, чем накормить мужа, чтобы он сыграл лучше. Yuri and Tatiana keep a modest apartment in the Moscow suburbs with their adopted grandson. Today we visited them. Yuri was packing for a trip with the 72 old timers to Barnaul, where he'll earn $200 for three days travel. Yuri, is there any resentment? or jealousy among the older players that young Russian athletes can come compete in the NHL and make millions of dollars? Thank you very much. Okay. Beautiful 
best subway station I've ever been in my life. I guess it was part of the big proletariat dream to make the first public place that people see before they go to work are these grand underground cathedrals that are essentially subway stations. Unbelievable. Despite the changing nature of Russian life, watching Alexander Yakushev skate in this old central Red Army rink, it could be any era in Russian history, guided by any number of political ideologies. It's as if time stops when the puck is on the yak's stick and he's cruising down the wing feeding some bucket-headed winger from Canada. While the hockey rink is Alexander's sanctuary, the theater is Tatiana's. I got together with her in the Mali Theater, once the home away from home for Tsar Nicholas II and Vladimir Lenin. Это знаковое место Москвы и всей России. Недаром вы, наверное, обратили внимание большой напротив малый. While Alexander and Tatiana are as close to hockey royalty as it gets in Moscow, they've suffered their share of pain in the new Russia. In 1992, a time of new freedom and utter lawlessness throughout the country, their daughter Katya was abducted while the Yakushevs were away in Switzerland. Her body was found a year later in the Moscow River. You know, it's not just that a person died и умер. Это здоровая девушка, последний курс института, написанный диплом, и ушла и не вернулась, как вы читаете, понимаете? Считается 21 год, один месяц и 9 дней. Видите как? Ну, не пришлось. Жаль. Tatiana, a lot of old people have been victimized uh, by change in Russia, from the old Russia to the new Russia. A lot of young people have been victimized as well. Um, do you think, in general, that we live in more violent times in the new Russia? You know what I'm saying? Times are not chosen. They live in them. You know, you have to live and accept the reality. What is this life? И она не должна быть такой легкой, легкомысленной. Здесь все, она многогранна. Ну и что бы я ни сказала, конечно, с моей стороны, я все делала ради этого любимого мужчины, ради Александра. Понимаете? Ради Александра. out of Moscow by night. We're gonna catch his overnight trains, beautiful night, a little bit of snow, about minus eight degrees, below zero. And uh, we're gonna head into the country, into the heart of Russian hockey. We're gonna go to Kazan in Tartarstan. Let's go. To know the whole story, they turn to CBC News, bringing you the Canadian perspective, the source Canadians trust. CBC News, The National, with Peter Mansbridge, tonight at 10. T minus 20 seconds and counting. ER go. Guidance internal. Control program confirmed. 10, 9, 8, 7. Ignition sequence start. 4, 
one. All engines running. Lift off. We have lift off at 8.14 in the morning. Introducing the all-new Pontiac G6. Built for drivers. Getting ready to clean the bathroom, Mom? Yep. Keep stretching. Introducing the Mr. Clean Magic Reach, a new extendable cleaning tool that makes cleaning the bathroom less of a workout. It comes with a flexible head and two different cleaning pads. The scrubbing pad tackles showers and cleans tubs with ease. The mopping pad cleans counters, floors, and hard-to-reach areas. Why reach? Get Mr. Clean Magic Reach. When it comes to shipping, talk is cheap. Mistakes aren't. Ron's got the horsepower. They've got the planes. The technology. Truth is, I don't care how they do it. I just care that my packages get there on time. Hey, all I ask for is perfection. Other than that, I'm pretty easy. UPS delivers more packages on time worldwide than anyone. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Look, I'm sorry for what I said. It's over. I'm leaving, and I'm never, never coming back. Ever! Sorry, I forgot this. You still on for tonight? Yeah, pick me up at 7. The mozzarella chicken and cheeseburger supremes. Two slices of processed mozzarella and a creamy parmesan sauce. Yep, it's that good. Wendy's, it's better here. Our pickup window is open late. What do you get for the service charges your bank makes you pay? Do they make your savings grow? Most banks pay almost no interest. Do they make your banking easier? No. Most banks make you pay even when you're doing the work. Is that fair? Perhaps you should become a customer of ING Direct. You'll never pay a service charge, but your savings will grow, earning high interest. Get real value. Call 1-800-ING-DIRECT. Save your money. A thousand years ago, Genghis Khan came to Kazan and stopped. Having conquered half of Europe, he looked around and thought, hey, it's kind of nice here. I think I'll stop marauding for a while. Genghis and his nomadic Mongol army, the Golden Horde, eventually settled in Kazan, and their descendants became known as Tatars, and the region Tatarstan, which is unique in Russia for being largely Muslim and hockey-mad. <laughs> Mullah Shamil is one of the biggest hockey fans in town. On game day, which in this case will see Dinamo and Alexander Ovechkin visiting Kazan, he calls the faithful to prayer from his modest wooden mosque. Allah, what do you think makes hockey a great game? Kazan's Super League team, the Akbars, signal the changing times in Russian hockey. Owned by the local oil company, Akbars have done what the Moscow teams could not, luring an embarrassment of NHL lockout stars to their team. Brad Richards, Vincent LeCavalier, and Ilya Kovalchuk among them. One of the first lockout stars recruited by Akbars was the colorful Lithuanian-born defenseman Darius Kasparitis. What are some of the greatest changes in, in Russia that you've seen firsthand uh, since you've been here last? I think all the changes are better, you know. Uh, the only one thing you miss is closeness of the people 
during Soviet era, you know, when you had uh, people living in an apartment building and everybody knew their name and everybody celebrated the same uh, holiday, everybody said hi, everybody left their kids with a neighbor and uh, stuff like that. And nobody kind of count the money, how much, what, what people make, you know, everybody kind of share the same things. If you have no salt, you go knock at the neighbor's door, or if you need a potato, you go knock at the neighbor's door and ask for that. Right. I think that's what people miss, miss the most from the Soviet era. Right. Wow, so beautiful. Where do you start? Very solid. It's like it's got a hard shell. Huh? It's got a flat too. That's a nice hat. This is slightly more Bill Cosby. Yeah, it's too big too. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's my that one. Yes. Oh, for a girl. That's a good look though. Too tall. Too hot. No, oh, too 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 big. Not too small. That's a little like a, a big chair is on my head. Okay, okay. Okay, that she's laughing. Sure. I like this color though. Too. Still too weirdly chair head, eh? How much is the one? Yeah, you guys, you guys need only to give me a bag. Okay. Wait till Casparitis gets a look at this. Thank <laughs> you. After rubbing elbows with Darius and the rest of the lockout millionaires, we came upon an industrial park on the fringe of the city. There, in the middle of a pile of bricks and rubble, slouched a half-finished rink, the handiwork of a truck driver named Bernat. He spends every ruble he earns building the only public ice pad in all of Tatarstan, hoping that it might provide a solace for the thousands of kids in the city. Главное, чтобы дети могли заниматься. Это была моя мечта. Ну, как вам объяснить? Вот, скажем, хоккеист или любой спортсмен, он бывает порядочным, хорошим человеком. Понимаете, из него не будет преступника. Поймите правильно. И в этой ситуации я на это внимание не обращаю. What do you think of the big team, Akbars, spending millions of dollars bringing imported stars to play for the home team when your spending every dollar you earn to buy bricks, to build this rink brick by brick, board by board. What, what would you say to the owners of the big league team? No, это не стоит таких денег, чтобы в такой бедной стране, как наша, как говорится, и и вдруг находить такие деньги, когда врачи, учителя не получают зарплату. Это обидно. Добрый вечер, уважаемые радиослушатели. Я извиняюсь, что я влезаю. Неожиданно совершенно получилось. Сегодня у нас в гостях человек, который уже разорвал множество женских сердец в Казани, который наломал уже немало клюшек об голову с Америка. Сегодня у нас в гостях, здесь звучат всеобщие аплодисменты, Дариус Каспаратис у нас в гостях. Здравствуй, Дариус. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Два вопроса у меня по вчерашней игре. Кричат ли в Канаде вот, в спорные моменты о каких-то сексуальных предпочтениях судей? Вот. Нет, такого не бывает. Ну а что они кричат тогда в Канаде? То есть вот у нас кричат, что э, судья живет с мужчиной у нас вот вчера. Это, это да, было это, это очень было интересно, потому что я не знал, что есть судья другого расположения и другого секс-ориентации в России. А в Америке или в Канаде они просто свистят или говорят бу. Бу, просто бу. Кем занято сейчас твое сердце? У меня есть своя любимая женщина, которая сейчас находится в Америке, потому что... Не, в Америке это понятно, это все понятно. Это все понятно. Вот, то есть ты верен, вот и она и все, и, вот, и других вариантов да, никаких. Да, я живу по, по западным а, а, обычаям, я не изменяю своей жене, потому что... И не живу по российским, потому что у меня не должна быть жена и любовница, потому что, думаю, должен доверять и верить. Это тоже серьезно. Я думаю, это серьезно. Вот что меня сделал запас моей головой. И они сейчас вам поставят песню про хоккей, которая в Канаде очень популярна. И я думаю, может, наш... Какой-то ковбой поет. Ковбой поет с гитарой, короче. Не знаю, что это, но это некая популярная канадская хоккейная песня, которую мы сейчас с вами и будем слушать. Будем надеяться, что действительно модная канадская песня про хоккей. Hello out there, we're on the air, it's hockey night tonight. Tension grows, the whistle blows, and the puck goes down the ice. The goalie jumps, 
and the players bump and the fans all go insane. Someone roars, Bobby scores. This guy drink a lot of coffee. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. On this night, the greatest hockey players in the world are competing in front of 3,000 fans in a remote Muslim city 12 hours southeast of Moscow. The distance that once existed between hockey in Russia and hockey at home is long gone. The press have even taken to calling Akbars the Kazan Rangers, because like their New York cousins, they've overspent in an attempt to bring glory to their town. But on this night, Dinamo, the old KGB team, defeats the millionaires by a goal. No matter how much money is pumped into the Russian game, and no matter how much their league or their players start to look like ours, one truth about hockey remains. Dollars don't score goals, players do. America's nasty public family feud. This is just why. They're the enemy. Is there no limit? The media leads a very comfy, liberal elite bubble. Sticks and Stones, CBC News, The Fifth Estate, Wednesday night at 9. Are you looking at my sister? It reminds me of you. Outstanding since the Globe and Mail. Do you remember slapping the security guard? Brainy, gritty drama. Brilliant scripts. You be the judge. This is Wonderland, Tuesday night at 9 on CBC. Do you want my sausage? Excuse me? Most new models come with minor changes, a tweak here, an adjustment there. So when we crafted the new Buick Allure, we decided to change only two things, the interior and the exterior. Introducing the new Buick lineup, the Allure, Rainier, and Terraza, the next chapter in our heritage of award-winning quality and something totally unexpected from Buick. Introducing Tylenol Ultra Relief. It's fast. It's tough. It's extra strength Tylenol, plus a pain relief enhancer. For your tough headaches and migraine pain, new Tylenol Ultra Relief, when extra strength Tylenol isn't enough. Two Wendy's Mozzarella Chicken Supremes? Give me one. I helped you move in here. In college, I was your only friend. I let you take my girlfriend to prom. When mom and dad could only send one of us to camp, I let you go. When I was four, I found you in a basket in the woods and convinced my parents to raise you. Come on! Now we're even. Totally even. The Mozzarella Chicken and Cheeseburger Supremes. Two slices of processed mozzarella and a creamy Parmesan sauce. Yep, it's that good. TD Canada Trust, we take the time to understand your needs before recommending a mortgage worth celebrating. I got you, babe. Visit TD Canada Trust or call us and get the right mortgage. Babe. I got you, babe. When Canadians want to know the whole story, they turn to CBC News, bringing you the Canadian perspective, the source Canadians trust. CBC News, The National, with Peter Mansbridge, tonight at 10. They can lift us to ecstasy and drive us to madness, unravel the mystery of our emotions with passion and fury, the emotional brain. A four-part series continues with Love, Tuesday at 8 on CBC. It's about 6.30 in the morning, we landed in Omsk in Siberia, it's really, really freaking cold. Time for the double hat! And uh, the airport's closed, so we're going to stand here for about a half hour and wait. But here we are. The 
Omsk Avantgarde are the reigning Russian Super League champions. Last year they beat Magnitogorsk in the finals and the city has been celebrating ever since. From the high excitement inside the avant-garde rink to the busy frozen ponds of the city, hockey is everywhere in Alms. On game day, the rink outside Father Denisi's church is packed with kids getting ready for their first tournament of the year. Привести детей к церкви, к понятию о Боге и вообще подвигнуть их на добрые дела. On game day, Marina, owner of the World of Hair and voted the avant-garde super fan of the year, is preparing anxiously for the big game. Ну, конечно, я волнуюсь, надо очень хорошо выглядеть. И э, просто в таком платье очень, очень легко чувствовать себя королевой. The heartbeat of Russian hockey has changed so much over the years that the passion and electricity that I'd hoped to find at Moscow's Luzhniki Arena can now be found in the provinces, in places like the roaring avant-garde arena. Is she nervous? Yes, <laughs> For one night, this small city, once closed off from all Western visitors, was now the very epicenter of the hockey universe. Still reeling from their defeat a few nights earlier to Dinamo, Kazan hit for three quick goals. But a late goal by Yermir Yager promises that the avant-garde are not done yet. The twists and turns of the game are written on the faces of the fans, and at times the tension appears to be too much. In the third period, Omsk roar back to tie the score before taking the lead. The lockout stars seem liberated by the size of the rink and by the Russian style of fire wagon hockey. It's a surreal feeling watching players with whom I'm so familiar skating in this strange town in a rink with a tenor to match any in Canada. I've just witnessed one of the greatest hockey games I'll ever see in my lifetime, in one of the world's great hockey towns. With their victory, the black and red faithful can go home rest assured that for one more night, their team and their city were at the top of the hockey world. After Omsk, my journey into Russian hockey feels almost complete. There's just one more thing I have to do. Number four. Number four. It's quite a burden. You know who number four was, don't you? Bobby Orr actually didn't play for Canada. Kuskin. Thirty-three years after first seeing them, I was now one of them, if only for one night. A 72 old timer skating in a dark rink in a distant mining town 14 hours outside of Omsk. In Russia, as in Canada, hockey is a constant. No matter how much the players change, whether money fattens the system, or governments rise and fall and rise again, 
The one thing I realized as I skated with this group of men who'd once thrown fear into the hearts of Canadians is that hockey and hockey players are of one cold nation and that nothing can stop the game. on the passionate eye. They're daredevils. It's a rush to be up there. And everybody looks up at a job and to see like, man, those guys are crazy. Canadian Mohawks and the descendants of Newfoundlanders who worked the steel girders high above New York City. They cleared away the mangled horror of 9-11. There was bodies all over the place. Uh, there was a lot of death there. Now they're rebuilding the towers. That's Slam and Iron when the Passionate Eye returns on Wednesday, April 13th. For more information about all of CBC's great documentaries, visit our website. Tomorrow night, The Nature of Things has part two of the four-part series, Passion and Fury, The Emotional Brain. This week, David Suzuki explores love. How does he get to have all the fun? And right after that, it's an all-new episode of This is Wonderland. And don't forget to join me, Alan Park, and all the gang from Royal Canadian Air Force this Friday night for a double whammy. Two back-to-back -back brand new episodes of Air Force, including our season finale. Stay with us. The National is coming right up. A strong earthquake rattles South Asia with deadly force, but it fails to spark a tsunami. Details next on The National. You got up early? Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are we ready for this? Come here. I want to show you something. You fixed it. Make your dream home a reality. CIBC, for what matters. <laughs> what do you get for the service charges your bank makes you pay? Do they make your savings grow? Most banks pay almost no interest. Do they make your banking easier? No. Most banks make you pay even when you're doing the work. Is that fair? Perhaps you should become a customer of ING Direct. You'll never pay a service charge, but your savings will grow, earning high interest. Get real value. Call 1-800-ING Direct. Save your money. First came CTS. Built at the top rank plant for initial quality. And now comes the all new STS. Lightning strikes twice. Cadillac breakthrough. The passionate voice that will leave you breathless. Andrea Buccelli with the World Symphony Orchestra. Live in concert, April 7th at Air Canada Centre. Reserved seats are on sale now at the box office, all ticket masters, or online. Don't miss Andrea Buccelli, sponsored by McCormick. At dinner time, my mom does this thing with her eyes. It happens when my brother wants mac and cheese. And my sister wants hamburger. And I want spaghetti, no chicken fingers, no lasagna. But her eyes go normal when we ask for Pizza Hut. Because they have four for all. Four pizzas with different toppings for like $12.99. The four for all, because I don't like green peppers. And if you have a toonie, you can get wings or a Caesar salad or a big bottle of Pepsi or Santa Parks. Call 310-1010. Pizza Hut, eat and laugh and share. Wow, it's hot in here. You got to do something about your radiator coolant. Thanks. Ah. It says so right here in your owner's manual under how to protect your warranty. Time to visit the fluid experts at Mr. Lube for a quick, convenient cooling.